a while before the Netflix show was released, I'd already finished the trilogy of Shadow and Bone, which before was used to be called Grisha Trilogy. And if you watch any of my previous videos, like Thoughts While Reading Shadow and Bone or Thoughts While Reading Stage and Storm, you would know that one of the first characters that I came to love was the Darkling, or if you've just watched the show, you would mostly know him as Alexander Kirigan. First of all, this video is not containing any spoilers, so just be relaxed. The first impression I got from him was, oh my god, this is a dark prince who had suffered a lot during his life, and finally he's having someone in his life that can actually bring love and light into it. And I love this trope so much, and I don't give a damn if it's toxic or whatever, I love reading in fiction. So basically I was definitely in love with these two together with Elena and the Darkling and I could really sense the chemistry, it was so thick in the books that you could actually cut it with knives. But apart from that, what kept my respect for him was the way Lee Bardugo respected the character. Like, as for real, he's a dark kind of character and not necessarily a black one. Most of these characters, in the book at least, are actually morally grey. So you could see the different sides of them, the weakness and the goodness in all of them. What actually was kind of fascinating to me was the fact that she respected them throughout the whole trilogy. Because a series that we got to see like a few years ago included these villains that did this Disney classic <laughs> when their plans were disrupted or <laughs> when they actually succeeded and that was, sorry, very disgusting and unrelatable and unrealistic like at the middle of something serious I would be poker face staring at the wall wondering how the author could have escaped with this horrible trade and actually kept doing it you know, through multiple books but anyway Lee really did respected this character, like, you could have compassion for him. You wouldn't see him as, oh, his devil. And something beautiful the show did was the way they showed some glimpses of his past and also about the history of the fold and how it was created and how different characters had began to show different emotions and thoughts regarding the matter and they weren't always like, very righteous and saying the right thing all the time like they changed with the passing of the time and that was really beautiful and nice touch Netflix thank you but if you've binge watched the series or you've read the trilogy and were like nah, I should Melina which is fine of course it's not if by some disastrous miracle you still don't love this character I have two options for you that you definitely should read and there won't be any spoilers if you've only watched the series and haven't read the book or vice versa and those are the two short stories that were released after the release of Shadow and Bone. The first one is the tailor. It's a part of the story while Elena was still in the Med middle palace but told by Genia's perspective. As I'm not supposed to be telling you any kind of spoilers, it also contains scenes where she remembers how she even began to work as a maid for the queen and was abused by the king and how she began to deal with that fact and what actually matters here is the way she and the darkling interact like you get to see that kind of interaction and that actually gives meaning and more depth to his character and how, despite all that Jenny was going through, she still decided to stay and resume and wait and be his soldier. Like, very insightful, I say. <laughs> and even better than that is the demon in the woods, which is about the Darkling's own childhood. While he and his mother were constantly escaping from city to city, from kingdom to kingdom, because of their strange kind of Grisha power, and how actually his mother influenced him greatly to put a barrier between himself and the rest of the world. And his interaction with other people his age 
when he was still very young and, of course, eager to have a normal life and receive love as he was willing to give. These two are really beautiful. If you've binge-watched the show and you just miss these characters, how many times can you binge-watch the series over and over again? Or if you've read the books and you don't really have to have enjoyed it that much, like, personally, about the trilogy. Would I recommend it to my older self? I would be like, it was such a neutral experience for me. It was well done, but it didn't really have a life-changing effect on me. But it was really nice. And like, you know, even sometimes when you don't enjoy a series, it's been a damn series. And you've been with these characters for a very long time. So naturally, you kind of miss them. And there's this sickness within you like your book form, that makes you want to know even more about them. Like, that's, if that's the case, these two novellas are going to be really sweet for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please go on and give it a thumbs up or maybe down. Some kind of reaction would be nice. But before you go, please tell me if there's any writer on the internet or whatever writing good quality fanfiction about these characters and I'm thinking about a, the kind of change that would be in the favor of my dearest dark prince so have that in mind and do recommend me please or if you know any other kind of book that represented this trope or was kind of similar and you actually really much enjoyed it I would really be happy to add good books to my TBR as I'm sure anyone else reading the comments would anyway Thank you so much for watching until now. I'm Shahzad and I hope I'll see you later here on Shahzad's Stories channel.